Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm David and I have a confession to make. I've always had a little bit of a soft spot for these things. You know the magic mirrors where people put like a mirror film or perspex over a screen or a display and you can use it as a mirror but it has some extra bits of information on it? But I've always felt they were a little limited. They're often not very big and not very interactive. I've also always liked the wall-hung arcade machines, you know, where you've got a flat screen against a wall with a little control panel and you just put a game on it. If only there was a way to improve magic mirrors and combine them with wall-hung arcades. Oh, this? This is just my 65-inch touchscreen. Let's get into it. couple of things about this screen. It has got a plethora of inputs and outputs that you can use touch screens with. Obviously I'm only going to need one for a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to dual boot this so normally it would boot up into Magic Mirror but I can choose to reboot it and make use of Emulation Station. But I don't want this on my wall drawing nearly 200 watts of power at all times so I'm going to add a little bit of uh, better interactivity and this screen has RS-232 control which means the Raspberry Pi can talk to it in a pretty low level way and tell it to turn off, volume up, change source, go through the menus. So I'm going to use a PIR to turn the screen on and off when I'm in front of it or not to save power. And along with this I'm also going to make some other bits and pieces work and hopefully this is going to end up as a really cool device. Oh, and one other thing. Obviously a USB port where I can plug different game controls into depending on what game I'm playing. For anybody that doesn't know, 65 inches is huge. I mean, this thing's basically as big as I am. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the Pi that's going to be driving this. Now, for the best chance at emulating the most and the best games that we can, and of course running the magic mirror as smoothly as we can, I've managed to get hold of a Raspberry Pi 5. And I had initially hoped to make use of the 5 volt, 2 amp or 10 watt power supply that can come out of this screen and would be perfect for driving a lower power Pi. However, the Raspberry Pi 5 is up to 27 watts, so it has to come with its own power supply, which is fine. We've got the power supply, we've got the active cooler, we've got an SD card, and of course we've got a micro HDMI to HDMI, and most of my projects I do headless because I don't have much use for a screen, so I'm used to setting these up with SSH and WPA supplicant. Um, before you boot the Pi for the first time, but I'm gonna try and capture this using an HDMI input. No idea how this is gonna work. It could be horrendous, but we'll give it a try. It's much easier than manhandling a 100 kilo, 65 inch screen around and try and film it for you guys. So the OS I'm actually gonna copy onto this SD card. You don't install like you do all the other OSs. I'm quite used to using something like Bellina Etcher or the Raspberry Pi um, OS imaging suite to write the full operating system to the SD card. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna download uh, an operating system called PIN, which you can download from uh, GitHub, um, but we only need the light version. If you're internet connected, we only use the light version. So you download the zip file, extract all the files, disk management with your SD card inserted. We need to delete this partition, yes. Create a new simple volume of one gigabyte. And we're going to mount that as E, that's fine. We want it's FAT32 and we're going to call that pin. Okay, then we copy everything from this pin folder onto the SD card, right into that one volume. So that will enable pin, the operating system to boot but it will still give 120 odd gig of free space still on that SD card for PIN to install and manage the other operating systems and whatever partitions they need to operate. So the Raspberry Pi 5, as far as I'm aware, is the first Pi that's got a physical power button on it. So I don't actually know this, how this is gonna behave when I plug it in. I'm kind of hoping it's gonna go into low power standby already until I press the power button. I guess we'll find out. If you ever needed proof that this is the first time I'm doing stuff, that was it. 
Oh, it's booting and the fan is going. It's so different. That's such a different boot experience to all the other pies. I'm used to that cube of color. Ooh, promising. So this is PIN. Now PIN is an operating system which exists almost exclusively to download, install, and manage multiple other operating systems. And hopefully this is gonna work because I understand it's still in beta for the Pi 5. First thing I need to do is connect it to Wi-Fi. So operating systems, I'm gonna start and keep it simple. I will worry about Android at a later date in case I can get it working. To start with, let's install a light version of Raspberry Pi OS because I don't need all the bells and whistles. I'm going to install a couple of things and that's it. I'm not going to use it as a general operating system. Okay, so that has not proved as easy as I hoped it would be. I practiced this on a Raspberry Pi 3 just to make sure I knew how PIN worked, how to install the OSs, how to get everything set up. And with the Pi 5, nothing's the same. The available operating systems are different. The way you install PIN is different because it's only in beta. The driver support is ropey at best for the Pi 5. So instead of what I practiced, I now have something that ends up the same, but the process is totally different. If you want the full blow by blow details of making this work on a Pi 5, rather than what I've just described, head over to the Element 14 community. Maybe by the time you watch this, this will be updated so it's the same anyway. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! So I've got everything I need together for the electronics and that's going to be soldered onto this in retrospect ridiculously oversized PCB or perf board. It's fine, it'll work, and it gives me some future expansion options as well if I decide there's something else I want to add. Obviously I've got wiring to go with that, solder, flux, angled headers, straight headers. I got this ribbon cable to go from the Pi to the board. Now originally I was gonna stack this and directly insert that until I worried about uh, interference with the heatsink and having a ribbon cable seemed like a better option. And looking at how close some of these tolerances are, I think that was a good decision. Obviously, I've got to get the PIR wired up to this. Now, I want this to be on a fly lead so I can actually insert this through the front of the frame, which does mean I'm going to put it on this lead. I've got some angled headers so I can plug that into the board. Um, this is a 5 pin, and I'm actually going to have to trim this down to a 3 pin because it also needs to be able to fit through the hole that I'm going to bore in the wood for this in the frame. So the other component I've got is this RS-232 converter. So the UART on the Raspberry Pi, which is pins 8 and 10, I think, um, is a serial communications. It's the same logic and speed and properties uh, that RS-232 uses for serial communications. But RS-232 is a different physical interface, so it actually uses different voltages. So for that, you need a logic level converter. And I think that and the fact that this is a D9 connector on the front is basically all there is to this. So you give it signal voltage, ground, transmit and receive. That's it. And if you can get hold of one, these little Raspberry Pi pinout GPIO, really useful to keep in track on once you flipped it, reversed it and everything. So with that, I think it is time for a soldering montage. Excellent. So this PIR is really nice to use and all you do is give it 3.3 volts or 5 volts ground and the third pin goes high or low depending on 
if there's presence detected. And that means you could use this on Pi, you can use it on Arduino. It's very easy. And if you can write a sketch or a script that will look for an input or a GPIO going high or low, you can use a PIR. It's really simple. <laughs> oh, how do I get myself into these positions? Filming a mirror was a terrible idea, but hopefully you can see Hello, it works as a mirror. So up in the top corner, we've got, at the moment, it's a calendar showing the US national holidays. Obviously, I will change that to my family's ICS from Google Calendar, and it'll help us keep track of everything. Up here, weather forecast, you can set that to your locale, but you need to sign up for an API, so I've omitted that from uh, the setup process. And I've got the PIR, which at the moment, during the operational hours, uh, actually take, turns the screen, it blanks it or unblanks it depending on whether there's presence. And then I have a cron tab which turns the screen off at 11 o'clock at night and turns it back on at 7.30 in the morning. So hopefully this is sort of a sensible low power configuration but a very quick response and I will show you why that's important. Okay, so the reason I've chosen to blank the screen operationally during the day, I mean, it's all black and the LED backlight's dim and it's relatively low power. Um, but the boot speed is excessive from an off state. So if I press now, sending the serial command to the screen to turn on, let's time how long it takes to get to displaying Debian or Raspberry and desktop. I mean, it, it is actually doing something. There we are, back at the desktop. But I wanted the response time of the PIR to be really quick. So you walk down the corridor where I think I'm going to keep this and it'll be on as soon as the PIR sees you. And this has got a very wild, wide field of view. So I wanted the response to this to be really quick. So when this is on the wall in the corridor where I'm hoping to mount this, the PIR has got a very wide field of view. And I'm hoping by the time it picks you up, it's unblanked the screen, you'd be in front of it and you could see the information as a glance on the magic mirror screensaver, let's call it. And then of course a few minutes later when it's got bored of not having anybody look at it, it will turn itself back to blank. Then like I say, end of the day, it's going to turn itself off to that slow but powered off state. Similarly, it's quite slow to power off. If I send the command to sleep now, it does go but it takes time. So the, the software for this, the looking after the inputs, most of this is working in crontab for the on-off at the beginning of the day and the screen blanking the RS232 commands, I will post over on the Element 14 community. You don't need to see me struggling through writing Python. It's not my native language. I can just about make it work. So I'll post the script over there and you can have a look at your leisure and copy and butcher to your heart's content. So. The Raspberry Pi 5 is still very new and it took me a few tries to get everything working. Like I say, the process for setting up PIN, the multi-boot loader, is different on the Pi 5 to all the other Pis. That threw me off. The fact that RetroPie doesn't have an official release for the Pi yet threw me off. So using Recal Box, uh, Recall Box is, I mean, it's a new experience to me and this still could be a me issue as opposed to a Recall Box on the Raspberry Pi 5 issue but let me show you my limitation. So Recall Box works really well. It displays at 4K, the sound is awesome, the music, the background chip tunes, which I won't play here for copyright reasons, are very cool. Even the boot up and start up videos are awesome and nostalgia inducing. But you must be able to see my issue here. I can't see play games on this vertically or crop the screen to the top chunk to display at 1080p with the bottom buffered out. That would be fine. In fact, that would almost be ideal for the viewing angles. I have tried everything. I've tried command line, I've tried config, I've tried configuration files and cannot make this screen come out horizontal or vertical, rotated. If you know how to, please, please, please let me know over at element14.com forward slash presents because I really want to be able to play this without getting really bad crick in the neck. So uh, thank you for watching, let me know how to turn it.